Yes, thank you, Brent. Good morning. Welcome this morning to Woodland Chapel, Center for Spiritual Living. And welcome, Darcy and Brent. And Mary, you're helping out with the drums? All right, good deal. We have a trio this morning. Divine, um, what do you call it? Trinity. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah, so, well, good morning, and hope you're having a wonderful morning and, and a wonderful June. It's just been really great to kind of have a normal weather. <laughs> <laughs> kind of warm and cold and warm and cold. So is there anyone here for the first time today? All right. Well, welcome back, everyone. And... Our announcements this morning on the back of your program, we will be having our Super Soup Sunday next week. And there's a sign-up sheet for people to bring bread and soup and whatever goes with soup. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful time to get together because who doesn't like to have a nice bowl of soup? And it's also a wonderful... Fundraiser also, so thank you ladies for putting that on. Along with a list of ingredients. Oh, okay, a list of ingredients too. A list of ingredients too, so that there will be all kinds. And uh, next week I'll be talking about pleasure, which I, I think is kind of, I've never used that as a topic before in all these years, I know. Does that say something? <laughs> So, yeah, so going to have to be thinking about that uh, this week. And I, I actually told my husband this morning, oh, you're driving down here because I'm always telling him something profound. <laughs> and I said, you know, I think I'm going to organize my life so I can just have some time off to do what I want. And he said, well, what are you going to do for fun? And I was like, well, I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> But like, I'm so glad to have this topic this week to be focusing on what really, because that's where our energy comes from. And, and this magazine this morning, if you haven't got a copy, it's called Embracing Self, You're the Priority, which I was telling Cheryl, that's an interesting way of looking at things for many of us who were raised that we should not be a priority, uh, that that might be a little selfish and I don't know that that's <laughs> I don't even know that that's in the culture anymore but if any of us p have picked up on that uh, a reminder that we are also important so uh, hope to see you next week and all right so let us sing together right. We're and on. stand you have it in, your, um, in your program there some of you know this piece one of my favorite ones to do because it just comes in so handy. It's one of those ones that you should have as an earworm because um, so many things happen. So stand with me if you can. And uh, let's do I Release and I Let Go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more trouble, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I really.
Thank you. Do you feel just alive and full of spirit? Yes. Open our hearts and, and begin to, as we sing together, we will begin, believe it or not, to sh our breath begins to get in rhythm and so do our hearts. And that's a wonderful thing. So we have an invocation this morning. <sighs> so let us just come together with that energy, that life, that affirmation that we are only here for God. But not just that, we are here as that divine presence expressing, and that is profound. That is a profound realization. For as we are here as that life, that presence expressing, as it can only do in the whole universe, that nothing can really be separate and exist. And because we are here, we know that we are one with that. And all that that power is, is in us. We are not all of it, but all of those qualities exist within us. And it is for us to call them forth into reality, into our experience. So this morning, as we come together, we in open up and speak our word for the intention of embodying love and joy and peace and co-creativity and all of that that is richness in our life that brings us joy even in the midst of all life events that we know that we can open up and call upon those qualities that already exist within us to sustain and support us. And for this, I am so grateful to know, I am so grateful to know that this is the truth. And I release these words and let them go, for they are already a reality in our life. And together, let us firm by saying, and so it is. Ah, <sighs> so great to know this, to know that that is the truth for us. And so we have an inspirational reading this morning by Terry, Terry Turner. You know, we could do our affirmation. <laughs> Terry, come on up. We could. <laughs> I was so enthralled with the treatment. Um, so let us do affirm together because you know what affirmations are? They are reminding ourselves of the truth, aren't they? So I believe that joy comes from within. My source of joy lies within my heart. Now I use this power of spirit to harness my joy. I let it guide me into a happier life, even in the midst of grief and uncertainties. And so it is. And that is such a powerful affirmation. Um, what I think is a really good idea to take these affirmations like this, cut them off, put them on our fridge, and just... Um, being able to really see that truth in all moments when in the midst of things we forget. Terry, thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I don't know about this place. You know, I show up here five times, and after that, they're putting me to work already. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good to be of service, though. <laughs> So, Reverend Don's talk title today is Balancing Grief and Joy. And we have two readings to support that today. First one from Psalms 126. Those of you Old Testament buffs out there. It says, 
They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that go forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing their sheaves with them. And then from our Science of Mind magazine, on page 43, the article entitled Shed Your Tears, and there's two quotes, the first from Lizzo, who says, can't hold back my tears, that would be a crime, because I look pretty crying. <laughs> and from Ernest Holmes, from the New Design for Living, infinite presence become personalized at the center of your being, warm, colorful, loving, and joyous. Reading the words from Holmes, I wonder, do tears have a place in my personalization of the presence? Are tears part of our being warm, colorful, loving, and joyous? I would love to give myself the gift of tears. I have a mistaken belief that only a few things are worthy of or reserved for crying. Death, loss, hurt, or pain. Since I assiduously avoid all of those, I avoid crying. That is not to say I haven't shed tears for those I love who have died or been hurt. Rather, I allow myself a few moments and then shake it off. In some ways, I'm waiting for something terrible enough to unload the decades of grief I've stored up. When another race-related murder happens, when war breaks out, the earth is damaged, natural disasters devastate, or children are in any way harmed, I feel a stab of sadness and transition almost immediately into rage or action. The few times I really let the tears fall, I found incredible peace afterward. In a way, my tears cleared the illusion of anything I created in my mind that seemed to not be God, to not be love. Tears are a gift. Sorrow is a gift. I'm coming to understand that the colorful aspect of the presence individualized as me is all of my emotions fully felt. The full range of my human experience reveals that at the end of sorrow, at the end of tears, what is left is the essence of life, love itself. And the affirmation, starting today, I give myself permission to explore and fully experience the tenderness of my tears. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Well, those readings are always so profound. Something really to take with us. And Darcy and Brent. Oh, yeah. I was listening to that and thinking, um, <clears throat> I've had a, a very um, difficult year, let's just say that. And, um, and I, had, I had, was talking with a friend about it, and I said, oh, but I'm fine. I got this. I'm fine. Yay. And she looked at me, and she goes, no, you're not. I said, I am. I need to use that. And she said, no, you need to feel what you're supposed to feel and then use that. And I was like, oh, where have I heard that before? <laughs> hmm. So it's been a challenge to not be the uh, super macho, super always in there Dars, um, to find that space where I could allow myself uh, to feel what I needed to feel and then to find what I needed to to go on. And so uh, when I was asked to do this song, I thought, ooh, this, I, I understand this song. So we're gonna do it for you. Here we go. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a motherless child Sometimes I feel Like a motherless child Sometimes I feel 
like a motherless child a long long way from home a long way from home sometimes I feel like I'm almost done Sometimes I feel Like I'm almost done Sometimes I feel Like I'm And I'm a long, long way from home. I'm a long way from home. Take it up. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Oh, sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like a motherless child a long a long long way from Times I feel like a motherless child. Who has not felt that way at some time? Well, I must say that uh, looking at the title of our message for today, it uh, says right there in the program, it says, Balancing Grief and Joy. Mm. It says, Balancing Grief and Joy, not Balancing Grief with Joy. Huh. It appears to me that the Centers for Spiritual Living Assignment Department <laughs> up there somewhere um, seems to be like, they like to continue to challenge us uh, ministers to dig in, to dig in and, and embrace their suggested topics and the titles and make them contain something that we uh, all hope can give us some spiritual substance. Uh, let's hope there's something that comes out of this today that way. Um, and I just, all I can promise you is that we do try. Uh, Reverend Moore and Reverend Julie and I have talked about this. We like to, we like the challenges, but we do try. We thank you for being here and with us on our Sunday mornings and riding a journey with us on what we're, uh, on that trying that we do. Last Sunday, Reverend Julie spoke to that importance, that need in the um, evolving, the evolution of self-care. And earlier, Reverend Moore, during that morning, had been here at this podium to announce his challenging journey of self-care from this recent stroke that he experienced while traveling 
to New Mexico on a joyous trip to see his daughter. And so we're all encouraging him in his summer sabbatical and his self-care. You can count on that Reverend Moore. He's sitting right back there and just give him a wave. Glad you're here, Reverend Moore. <laughs> So my message of the morning is supposed to talk about balancing grief and joy. Like I said, it doesn't say balancing grief with joy. And self-care has got to be in there somewhere. So at first glance, I want to tell you this. I, I just couldn't get how grief and joy uh, together were something that humans need to balance. Well, grief, yeah, okay, grief, admit that, maybe. But joy, what is there to balance about joy? What is there to balance about joy? What is the connection to grief that joy could possibly have. Hmm. To me, I, I always thought um, of joy as that standalone, foundational state of being that was the anchor state of our natural being that we're learning about in our, all of the studies of what we have here, that the divine has graced us with this as we came into life. We were born into this human condition those conditions that would challenge us, no doubt about that, and make us human beings, having all those experiences that we go through that the world's waiting just to seem like it's waiting to heap upon us and give us the opportunities also to do as Reverend Julie asked, talked about last week. Remember, she talked about when she mentioned the presence of light, to realize that presence of light that we literally are made of, of the, the atoms and the molecules just joyfully alive, glowing with the life force that flows within us. And I can think of it as anchored by the soul's natural joyful state of intention, the state of intention for us to be spiritual beings, to express spiritual beings, discover all that we need to discover as spiritual beings, for us to remember why we were born, why we were given birth, why, why did we come to earth spreading this love of our source, the love of God? My. It comes doggone fast obvious that we got a lot to learn on the human level in this world. And that's where, we're, that's where we're swimming most of the time. And we're told by wisdom teachings, however, that one of those learning opportunities can come from the experiencing of grief. Oh, experiencing grief, huh? Grief and joy in that same sentence. But the topic today for today, speaks of balancing. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that nothing's really needed to learn from within our spiritual self, actually. It's our wholeness self is already there. Our, we like, I like to call it our true self, my true self. Other than maybe uh, learning how to um, discover our truth of natural joy, discovering that, okay? Uh, it's, it's kind of a, spoken of as being that natural, eternal state of being infinitely splendid. Uh, all those words that we're learning and crafting here, written in the code of our energetic spiritual self that was born with us, in us. The spiritual understanding of joy is what we're, I think, headed for, or I am. The spiritual view of joy claims that joy comes from the heart. Heart, 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 heart. It's found in the harbor at the center of our life beingness. Our source of joy, is told, we're told, is within us, within you, me. Not latent or sleeping either. So I don't think it's waiting to be discovered. It's not waiting on anything. Our science of mind teaching claims that joy, it's born into our being as a baby, as a babe of the human expressions already to be activated with lots to learn on the human level, as I said earlier, and lots to discover within our soul expressions. And joy is, I agree, I believe, a foundational expression of uh, the soul's natural state of being as me, as you, as us. Knowing and revealing the good of life's experiences. Yeah, the good. That, and, and confirming that somehow, not always, probably no, not always explainable or not always understandable on the intellectual level that we like to think of ourselves as. I'm a thinker, mm -hmm, yeah, okay. 
Somehow, I think in ever-evolving ways, continually, we in our human struggles, we, we, we begin to find ways to, to shift and transform our walks and journeys with grief when it shows up and, and, and transform those walks where, where we're kind of just turning and able to bring, up, bring ourselves face to face with the need to self-care. Mm-hmm. F- finally coming over us. I have been so negligent in that in my life, self-care. I like to take breaks, I think of myself. I take a nap, I meditate, but self-care is beginning to dawn on me. That is, that's a real subject for this entire month of June, is self-care. Yeah. Balancing our human experiences with our spiritual purposes for being here on this planet, this physical planet. Self-care, I think, is designed to bring us into balance. That's the deal. It's not a favoring ourselves or sweetly enjoying the moment. It's bringing us into balance. It has something really noble, strong. I have to think of it that way. Something really purposeful, spiritual. Taking the kindest care of ourselves as we would others as much as we would give others, and realizing that grief, yeah, grief is the other side of the face of joy. Now, I'm having to learn what that means. Grief is the other side of the face of joy. Remember, we had earlier discussions in some of our messages, Reverend Moore's, Julie's, mine, about uh, darkness and light, for an example, how darkness and light complete each other, bringing two opposites of contrast into a wholeness experience. You can't have a 24-hour day, a 24-7, without having night and day, sun and darkness. It's all part of the human journey, too. That's, what, that's how I feel it. We come into kind of individual existence, of course, coming from this one source we talk about, seeking to experience a physical human life on this physical planet Earth, and immediately (laughs) we begin to start filtering life happening through our physical senses. We feel, see, do. What goes into a baby's mouth all the time? Everything to begin with, right? (laughs) And, And for a time, we're finding ourselves locked in and living in duality mode, our duality state of being. The the opposites. Um, Believing believing in opposites because that's what we see. Uh, We are just trying to acknowledge, I think, the uh, differences that make us cognizant of the diversity, but we we talk about good and evil, sweet and sour, pain and pleasure, grief and joy, etc., and etc. You can just go on and on and on. Grief and joy. At some point, in our life, it, it, it's a fact, we find that grief will come to us in an unavoidable emotion sometime in our life. I don't think there's anyone who passes through life without that feeling, that experience. But we gotta remember, we have to remember, I think I have to remember, it's done unto me as I believe. Not what I'm wishing for or what I'm hoping for. It's, it's, it's my faith of believing in, in the ways to find relief from our, my grieving. Locked in on, uh, I'm, yeah, I have a North Star. I'm locked in most of the time on my North Star. I think we can begin to come up with a, a list of all the things that we believe in. If you just sit and just do that, I think it's healthy to do that. Things that we believe maybe can help us uh, in our grief, if we encounter it, and there's things that we believe. Uh, uh, one of these is something interesting to me. I read really some thinking about this. It's uh, encouraged by many, many counselors when you grief counseling to believe that we can overcome. We are overcomers. We must overcome. Songs are saying in all stages of our cultural history about overcoming, doing battle, doing and overcoming momentarily until I think the light eventually comes on 
in our understanding, which allows us to shift and see with spiritual sight and transform our human experiences and stop believing we have to be dragon slayers. Grief and sorrow and suffering can feel like dragons in our life, of course, monsters that impact our feelings and, and emotions and kick us in gear to fight or flight. That's just a kind of a human trait, fight or flight, when in reality we don't have to kill it or fight it or stuff it or bury it. <laughs> in spiritual reality, I think we can choose another road, another path called the high road. We can draw from within us that power which empowers us to find the steady, quiet courage to look grief right in the face. See it in this way. Maybe just see it as a messenger that we may have been really needing to catapult us into the, uh, the level of a, our greater yet to be. Now, does that sound like jargon spiritual jargon, I, I hope it doesn't. Our greater yet to be is always calling us to be who we were born to be and to see grief is neither good or bad. And yet it's an emotion. It's got to be, uh, must be attended in order to avoid what we can be, uh, what we call in our spiritual sciences, we call it spiritual bypass. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by spiritual bypass? I think uh, I need a drink of water. Mm. But I think spiritual bypass can mean it's, it's, it's we uh, make the excuse of using our spiritual beliefs and our spiritual practices as momentary shields and walls and, uh, to avoid experiencing the emotional pain, to avoid, yes, and of, of working through the psychological or the emotional issues instead of looking it right in the face, saying, what are you really made of? Show me. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has experienced a reason to grieve. To experience grief through a loss of, of someone or something. And uh, I want to bare my soul just a little bit today. I want to share a true story of something I, I, I experienced that called on me to balance an emotional time. And it'll, it'll stay with me forever. It's locked in as part of my North Star. I may have relayed this story several years ago, probably 10 years ago. Some of you may have heard this. But I feel it's appropriate to turn the light right on again, and I feel it's appropriate for the title of Balancing Grief and Joy. I don't know how many years ago it was, but one of our neighbors who, who knew I was a minister here at... Uh, Wooden Chapel, uh, and they were just didn't have a church they went to, but they had a, a faith they wanted to believe in. They called me on the phone. They wanted to sit and they wanted to visit with me about arranging a memorial service for their family, for the wife's mother who had just passed away. And so I invited them to come over to my house. They were just right across the street from us, and have tea and we talk about stuff. So we discussed the process. That we actually had a lovely time. Uh, rising above grief because they, uh, they, they talked about the memories of the so many joys that they had. And they, it, had it had tears and a lot of laughter. So I took notes. That's what ministers do sometimes when they talk like that with people. They just take notes. So after I'd given them tea and refreshments, they left shaking my hand and thanking me for agreeing to shepherd them along with their feelings in the service. I told him I'd even arrange for some music. I did offer to play my guitar because I knew that wouldn't work out too well, but I could get other people to play. Um, so the celebration of life was to take place the following Saturday, about a week away. And on Friday, the day before the gathering, my own mother, who was in hospice, made her passing at 2 a.m. that early Saturday morning. So I and my Mother's beloveds, my brother and her family, and we'd been holding sacred watch for three days and nights, and then she passed. So I left my brother and <clears throat> other loved ones who sat with my mother's body, and I went home to try to get aligned <clears throat> emotionally and physically, ready 
for the 11 a.m. memorial for my neighbor's mother. <clears throat> I didn't get much sleep. And I spent most of my time uh, affirming. I do that sometimes. I just lay and I talk to myself. I have affirm the divine presence for my mother, myself, and all others, including the family, the neighbor, and their mother. And then afterwards, I got up and breakfast. I tried to take a cat nap a couple hours before I was to be at the service. And I called the minister of this chapel at that time. It was a, it was a woman, Reverend Mary, I think was, I remember her, to bless me with a treatment of ease and grace to serve in the highest and best way for all of us. I began to use the breath, you know, you can do that. You're breathing in, you're breathing out, you're just with yourself. I began to consciously, mindfully speak my intention for love and compassion in the moments to be for that family. I sat alone in my study and I, I then began to consciously allow myself to do something that I don't usually do. I allowed myself to weep. I really, I really weeped. I was paying homage to honoring my immediate feelings of grief. They were there. I told my mother how much I loved her, I, uh, how I would miss her. And later, I began to feel something rising in me. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I recognized it as kind of light, as, as something I, I was singing in, in, my, in my head, in my heart. I kind of began to feel, I began to feel gratefulness, thankfulness. I was thankful to have the privilege that I was going to be bringing fulfillment and comfort and honor to the memory and moments of my neighbor's mother. And I knew, I knew what their grief and loss felt like because I, in those moments, I was an empath. You know what an empath is? I had empathy. I felt it, not sympathy, but empathy. But more like a bonding in love with a shared experience. Of course, I could not share my circumstances with them. No, that was totally inappropriate, I felt. But a peace, I really mean a peace, the past understanding was with me, it came over me. I was so thankful for that, it was solid. But I felt light, and I felt comforted too. I believe my mother would be happy for me in serving this family. I felt that. And to this day, I've never told my neighbor, of course, of my unique and most cherished experience regarding the timing of the universe. I could feel it that way. The timing of the universe that was calling me to serve without questioning and giving me the opportunity to be a universe in my own corner of the world and say, yeah, yes, I hear you, I see you. Yes, I'm coming with my heart opening. Yes, I now know what true love unconditional, without attachments, felt like. Ah, who spoke of that? Jesus said that. Ah, oh. I felt that I had walked through the shadows. I looked grief in the face, and I discovered the glimmers of joy. <laughs> a joy balanced with grief. Um, peace, I want to call it more than joy to begin with and it passed all understanding. I've never really put a permanent answer in place as to know how or where that peace came from. I, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that. I like to talk like a minister sometimes and talk about it. it's all God, God is all there is, I, sure. But it's not important to me. I just know how I felt deeply. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget how that experience has made me be a part of who I am right now and forever. Ah, and you know, I'd like to invite uh, Shannon to help me with something. Can you come up and help me, Shannon, with, with something? I'm gonna use, I'm gonna call on Taylor to help me do something here. This is Taylor. <clears throat> she is with me every morning when I wake up before I 
get the day started, I'll pick up Taylor and I'll, I'll do some meditation that I, for myself. And Taylor's a big part of it for me. I have to have some place to put my foot. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. There we go. There we go, okay. So we start. I don't know if you can hear the guitar, but I just want to say no one will ever know how deep inside I was crying. I still don't know how my peace came to be. I don't need to know why or when the angels of comfort showed up to hold me. I just know it's all between my God and me. All is well. All is well. Heaven or hell, wherever I go. That was unrehearsed, you, as you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we marched the morning along. We always love to have a song here that Darcy can give us. It's beautiful. I, I, I am so grateful uh, that my mother was right. She said, "You know why you can sing, right?" quite older when she was saying this, and she said, it's because God needed to figure out a way to get you into church so you'd hear what you needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Don. Um, it is, it is. I'm grateful to have um, friends and family and people that um, support me and do uh, allow me to be vulnerable. Um, and I'm grateful that God has taught me that vulnerability is not um, a lack of strength, but a finding of strength. And this song always reminds me of that. When you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side. get rough and friends just can't be found like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me When you're down and out, when you're on the
I'll take your part. Oh, when darkness comes and pain is all, all around, like a bridge over troubled water, I will. Sail on, silver girl. <laughs> Sail on by. Your time has come to shine. Oh, your dreams are on their way. See how they shine. All I can say is, wow, what a morning. Aren't you glad you were here today? Yeah. Thank you, Don. I mean, I've got so much to think about there. I don't even know where to begin, but thank you ever so much. That's a, a really deep subject. Yeah. And Darcy, Brent, Mary, thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. Ooh. I feel so blessed this morning, and this is why we're here, and this is why I come here. I can't get this just by watching it on my computer. So, feel the energy. Thank you so much. <sighs> so, I invite the uh, ushers to come forward and know that this is an equally sacred time of the service while we sit and we watch and we listen and we absorb. And this is our time to be participants in a truly profound way as we let ourselves share our gifts and our energy and our heart because it is all energy. So wherever you are and however you can share, it's not just about supporting, it's about our ability to give. Yes, indeed. So the affirmation, I'll remember this time. <laughs> Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. There it is. If you look in your um, program, you'll see you have the words. Probably most people know this song. I, ha I challenge you to listen to it in a different way. This song speaks of support always, for no matter where or what is happening. There is always support. This is called in the garden. In the garden. I come to the garden.
appreciate that, Darcy. You know, these spirituals, and I have albums, well, we don't do albums anymore, but that tells me, of many, many people singing these spirituals. Regardless of the tradition, these deep spirituals speak to all of us beyond theology, mm -hmm. and that is one of my favorites, so thank you. So, Raphael. Well, we're going to put a blessing upon what we have here today, and a blessing is something that often power of the word the yeah. goes out into the universe to the listening ear and comes back fulfilled with its past spreads out and running over so thank you all for what you decided to do here today we decide we decide to always come here and give you everything that we can of ourselves mm -hmm. every Sunday morning and when you show your appreciation for that in the so many ways that you do whether you have served <laughs> okay. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you all. I just had enough this morning. <laughs> Together, why don't we just simply say, and so it is. And let us stand for our prayer of protection and peace song. And together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us, and wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Sorry. <laughs> Red peace song. <laughs> 
It's okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>